Copper or steel boilers? That is the question. Which is the better material to use for a miniature steam boiler? And on screen at the moment is something that is not miniature in any way. This is a Stanier Black 5. I would think it has a steel boiler with maybe a copper firebox, which is a good combination. But how does it work when the boiler is not as big as the one on the Black 5? This, for instance, is on a 7.25 inch gauge, narrow gauge locomotive at Pugney's Water Park in Wakefield. And it runs on the line owned by my friend Bob Brocklehurst. This is a very nice engine, and you could call it a sort of small full-size one, really, because the driver actually does sit inside it. This engine has a professionally built steel welded boiler. And provided that the engine is well cared for, a steel boiler of this size should last quite a long time. This clip shows an even larger small locomotive. This beautiful locomotive has been put together by the skilled hands of the people who work at the steam workshop, and this also has a steel boiler. This is a copper boiler. It's of copper and silver soldered construction. It's the one from the simplex that I'm working on, and this photograph was taken at the steam workshop when it was being tested. Here's another copper boiler. This is a Stuart HB6, a very nice boiler. This one is designed to be gas fired. As indeed are these. This is a pair of Cotswold Heritage boilers. You will see now that there's sort of a trend being established. Every boiler that I'm showing you on screen, which is a small boiler, is made from copper. Even this one, which is a little bit bigger, six inches in diameter and quite tall. This is the really excellent Castle Steam V6 boiler, and it's currently supplying steam to a Stuart 5A steam engine. And with its two and a quarter inch bore cylinder, it has quite a good appetite for steam. In this clip, I'm shoveling plenty of coal into the fire hole. This boiler has quite a high steaming capacity, and once all this coal that I'm putting on the fire catches light, it will produce more than enough steam for a 5A. There are a couple of reasons why boilers are made from steel rather than copper. The first one is the price. Copper is quite expensive. Once upon a time I built a Sweet William. This was an 042 narrow gauge locomotive in 7 and a quarter inch gauge and the boiler kit alone for this was around 15 or 1600 pounds and that's a long time ago. And no it didn't stop there. There was then the cost of having the boiler built by my good friend the late Randy Blackburn who also built the boiler for my 7 and a quarter inch gauge Titch and a Stania Black 5 in 7 and a quarter inch gauge that I used to have. And then, on top of that, is the cost of the silver solder, which pushes the price up to a very high price. Apart from the price then, what is the other disadvantage of having a copper boiler? And the answer to that one is strength for the application. This great Foden steam lorry is owned by my friend Dave Hall, and all this motion work that you can see spinning round has to be supported by the boiler itself. This engine also has a steel boiler. This clip shows the display in the tent at the same rally, and as you can see, these are all very small models, and the small Mammod type don't even have copper boilers. Their boilers are made from extruded brass. I saw a video once on YouTube showing how they made them, and it was quite amazing. In the larger models are copper boilers. This is the normal thing. A while back, I rebuilt an old Mammod TE-1A traction engine. The boiler was definitely past its sell-by date, and the bush where the whistle fitted was very badly damaged. In the end, I bought a complete boiler assembly from eBay. What did I do with the old boiler? I chopped it in half to have a look inside it. Brass is not a good material to make boilers out of. It's OK for these very small steam toys that run on 10 or 15 pounds per square inch, but above that, it's dangerous to use brass. The main problem is de-zincification, where the brass starts to break down and the zinc separates from the main body of the material. But they work fine and they're quite safe at these very low pressures. Here's the engine running and as you can see, it runs rather well. A Mammoth traction engine is a very small model and the boiler has more than enough strength to allow it to support the firebox and the front wheels and the smoke box and the canopy. 
But there isn't really much weight in this at all. You can pick one up very easily with one hand. It's slightly different to the one in the background of this image. That is my Buddle Showman's engine in 4.5 inch scale, and that has a copper boiler. More about that later. This is a Marky Traction engine, quite a nice little thing, one step up from a Mamod, very small, and fitted with a copper boiler. This was one that I repaired and converted to gas firing. Again, it's very much in the steam toy end of the market, but it's safe because it runs at a much higher pressure than a Mamod, and by having a substantial copper boiler, there's a good margin of error. This model is also a Marky Traction engine, but this one is called a Scenic Showman's engine. Here it is without the canopy fitted. It's only slightly bigger than the previous one. The plumbing on it is a bit bizarre, I won't go into that, but it works OK. And again, there's a good margin of error, which is just as well, because it has a copper boiler. This is something different. This is a really old Bassett Low traction engine, in approximately 2 inch scale, I would say. But this one has had a new boiler. As you can see, there's a safety valve on the barrel, which you wouldn't normally find on a traction engine. The real place for the safety valve, and it has one fitted, on top of the regulator steam chest. I think this boiler was fitted by Maxitrack because it's not silver soldered, this is a copper welded boiler. Which I suppose is better than silver soldering because if you overheat the boiler, well the boiler's going to take a long time before it melts. This is my four and a half inch scale traction engine and it's a bit unusual. It's a big engine, it's not small at all. If you look at the size of me, and I'm not small at all either, sat behind it you'll see how big it is. It's seven feet long. With a traction engine, the boiler is a structural part of the system. The two plates that support the motion and the wheels, etc., bolt to the boiler at the back, and the front wheels, of course, at the front. To make this boiler strong enough to do all this supporting of major components, when it was built, the barrel was reinforced. I have some photographs in an album, and it shows this being done. So you may be thinking, why didn't I buy a steel boiler traction engine? Well, I'm not a young man anymore, I'm 68, which OK, is younger than some and older than others. One of the problems with steel boilers is, after a while, and that's a few years, it's not like after a few months, you will generally need to replace the tubes. They can be knocked out and refitted. If you buy a traction engine with a brand new steel boiler and look after it, like blowing it down to get rid of all the water after every run, combined with using water treatment that apparently coats the inside of the boiler with tannin, which slows down the rusting process. There's no reason why a steel boiler couldn't last quite a long time, but I didn't want to take the chance because this was a used model built in 1995, and when I saw a thing of this size that was a copper boiler, I thought, yes, this is the one for me. To repeat the question from the beginning of this episode, which is the better material to use for a model steam boiler? If you can afford the cost of a large, thick-walled copper boiler, then that's what I would go for. But from a cost point of view, a commercially manufactured steel boiler, welded together by a coded welder, should be OK for at least a decade before it needs anything doing at it. And that's about it. I don't think I've missed too much out, and I hope you found this informative. I'd just like to say, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.